This month makes it 12 years since I moved to Copenhagen and like time flies. Much has changed slowly, sometimes more rapidly, but overall I would say that Copenhagen is a different city. That by itself is also a different country in many ways. In this video I'll share my reflections, again from my expat point of view, on the 7 ways Denmark has changed the most since I moved in. Number 1 is that there's a bigger eating out culture. If you take the Mario of 12 years ago and transport him to the future, the first thing I would notice is that there's a lot more more cafes and a lot more restaurants and there are a lot more people eating out. So to put this into perspective, I used to live in the center of Fredericksburg, that's part of Copenhagen, and within the 300 meter radius of where I lived, we went from having just one pizzeria and two coffee places to have like over 10 places overall just around the corner. And then I saw a similar type of development like this in other parts of Copenhagen. More interestingly, I would say that many of the places were targeting younger people or are targeting younger people, so with cheaper food, more international themes and let's say more variety and less is more broad. To add to that, there's just an explosion of the street fruit scene. Again, this is not just a Denmark specific thing, I think you could see it all around the world. But again, we went from basically the Pulse stands to Papierön, which was this like place where we have a lot of things going on, and then now to Refen, and many other places again exploding all around the city. So if you like to eat out, there are plenty more and much better options with each year passing by, especially when you consider how things look like 10 years ago. Number two is more quality of life options. So you're speaking about food, you can now get food delivery in Denmark. So back in Argentina, where I'm from, I ordered food together with my friends almost every weekend on the phone. So we would just order Chinese food or pizzas or empanadas and so on. It was just part of weekly life. It just it was something completely normal for us. So I was shocked when I moved to Denmark and again more than 10 years ago when it was almost impossible to get food delivered to your house. I remember telling my friends shocked that it's like, hey, you can't order food home in Denmark. So if you wanted a pizza, you can of course call the pizzeria and say, hey, I want a pizza. But you need to go down the stairs, go to the pizzeria and Pick it up. Thankfully, for people like me that are a bit lazy sometimes, you know, this has changed. Now we have Gold, which is like the Uber Eats of the country here in Denmark. It has a huge reach, so you can basically get food delivered in all of the big cities. So if you want that Thai food that you really wanted to try for tonight, you can order that online. Again, it's not that it's especially cheap, but it's also not expensive. And it's just great to have the option. And I think that this is just the most visible part of an overall increasing trend in quality of life type of services in Denmark. You can also order groceries home. Again, this is something that used to be completely normal for me back in South America and now we do it again every week here in Denmark using something like Nemblik but you can also use it also with Footex or with Coop and also I would say it's also more common and you can see it more often that people get a cleaner or a babysitter and all this type of time saving labor that was just not there or not so common before. I think this is an absolute blessing especially I now as I said as a father of two kids to have a lot of these time savings is very very important for me. Number three is that there's a lot more expats or foreigners to work. What I have just said is let's say unlocked because there's a lot more access to labor. For instance, I would say a big chunk of the world drivers or the people that are cycling with a world delivery of food are from South America like myself and many of them come here for example on a working holiday visa which is like one year visa where they can come up to Denmark and also to Sweden and to some other places work for a year and then they need to leave right but again like this way you can actually get a lot more of this let's say cheap labor but this trend of having more foreigners working is also extends to the, let's say the office type of jobs so the white collar type of jobs. For instance for me this was a big change so I started working in Maersk in 2011 so my first thing in the company and I remember the old boss you know Max Maersk McKinney was there even multiple times back then. I would see expats at the office, but the office, I would say, back then was overwhelmingly Danish. Then I moved to Carlsberg, and I remember I was the only non-Dane in the whole office I worked on, and it was the Carlsberg Denmark office. And for almost two years, man, it was just very, very, like, so cultural shock in a way, right? So, and now I would say it's completely different. Like, the Maersk office, or where I'm working, you know, on Maersk again now, is full of people from India, a lot of people from the Americas, a lot of people from Asia and beyond. And of course, this reflects the international side of the Maersk business, because because I mean, we operate in all these countries, so we actually bring a lot of people from that were working in one of our local offices down to Denmark, and we want to grow our logistics in all these places, but again, it's like night and day versus how it was before. It's a lot more, let's say, expat heavy. And then I hear the same from friends working in other companies, so it's just not, you know, Maersk and Carlsberg that are like this. The job market is tight at the moment, and it's relatively easy to bring high-quality qualified labor to Denmark. Many companies, especially the big international corporations, are actually doing that. Next up is that there are a lot of new neighborhoods. So I live in a place called Islandsbrugge in Copenhagen, and my apartment and the area I live, so all the things that you actually see around here on, the back, on my back, have been built in the last 15, 20 years, even a bit less, you could say, as well. So since I moved in, all this neighborhood is almost all everything is new, and there's still a lot of constructions just like a few blocks down the line. I love to see this in the old maps, so if 
you just scroll through you know time in the google street view and so on you can actually see how this area and how other areas in the city have changed a lot add to this just in copenhagen alone that you have like the north haven area which is also completely new as a like residential area the whole carlsberg city which has been built in the last five six years the whole area around bestama and orista as well is very new and you get again like it's not that you get just some new buildings here and there you actually get full neighborhoods that haven't just built, built up completely over the last 10 years and this is interesting because again it's just not this one or two apartments it's like again the whole thing whole areas of the city and of course i give copenhagen examples but i know that's the same ha has happened in the old industrial quarters of the other big cities like Aarhus, old work audience as well they're turned like old industrial areas that sometimes were well located for example close to the water as well here in Sandruge, into attractive new neighborhoods for residential purposes or for offices as well again funnily so despite all this new building moving to a city like copenhagen and renting out is still a lot more expensive than it was when i moved in 2010 so i was paying three thousand four thousand for a room in a nice flat in the center of Norway, or center of Ellisberg. not anymore now if you want to move into a city like copenhagen it's really really expensive also if you're a student so just keep that in mind number five is that denmark has gone completely digital so denmark has always been a digital place at least it was 10 years ago but it is even a lot more now i can give you some specifics so it's a completely cashless society i personally never carry cash and except the odd cases you never really need cash i could say and you can pay with a card or with your phone pretty much everywhere and this got supercharged in the last five years i almost don't remember how the different cash bills look like it's pretty funny then with ebox and nemid and meet id you can basically get all your bills and official correspondence and everything beyond all just online so you can also sign in the fanciest documents with the signature so you don't need to have physical copy of anything you can get your health data your blood tests again all online all in the apps and it's really good and really works on top of this if you have kids you can do all the kids related things online as well so if you need to sign up the kids to daycare or to the kindergarten or to get their documents or book all types of appointments with doctors and this and that it can all be done online and it's again such a blessing i think like denmark is really far ahead from most countries on this it was already far ahead 10 years ago but now it's even to the next level i think i love it and i think we need to give some credit to the people working on this in the danish government number six is shops have longer opening hours so back to the quality of life piece there was a time when supermarkets and shops in denmark closed on sundays and had overall a much more constrained opening times and the reason was no you would say so the, the idea was that if you make supermarkets and the big chains close then smaller enterprises have a shot against you know competing against these big chains and they also increase the worker welfare this was not a denmark specific thing you could say in germany as well or in austria you know still to this day most shops remain closed on sundays that's part of the past in denmark and now you can always get that milk carton or that breakfast eggs or that potatoes or something whatever you want just going to a shop on a sunday at eight in the morning or six in the afternoon is going to be open most of the times and then on top of that you just have more selection as well most Danish supermarkets still have probably what is in my opinion the worst and most restricted selection of goods in the whole of europe but still it's a lot better than it was 10 years ago the last point is that it's easier to invest in denmark it's still a mess of taxes rules and regulations to invest in stocks and indexes in denmark so it's still probably the most complicated place in the world by far but things have improved mind again this is coming from a terrible baseline for example first there's the activities per account and now you can have a savings account that pays just 17 percent in tax versus the normal 27 to 42 that you used to pay before there is of course a catch and that is that you know you need to pay taxes on unrealized gains but okay that's a different story but again we didn't have this before of course you can only have this up to 100 something thousand krona but still it's better than nothing then as of a couple of years ago only you can start to invest in foreign based etfs and index funds so long they're in a special danish list from scat this opens the doors for danes or people like us you know working in denmark as well to get access to what's the most of the world invests on again there's a catch you need to pay real estate gains but still this is still a lot better an order of magnitude better than it used to be like just five years ago if you're interested in investing you should definitely check them out my investing in denmark course where i go into depth on all these topics and a lot more it's free and you can find the link down in the video description now looping back to the activities for the conto that's the easiest and best way for most people that want to start investing in denmark to go for first and there's a video over here where i explain it in depth and again how you can open one yourself thanks for watching and i'll talk to you again next week